my name is Remy Pengel, and I'm the Associate Director for the Center for Wind Energy at James Madison University. <clears throat> and this is Virginia Wind for Schools, a state perspective. So the Wind for Schools program is a national program that is funded by the U.S. Department of Energy and is active in 12 states. Here in Virginia, the Wind for Schools program is administered by the JMU Center for Wind Energy, and our center focuses on research, education, outreach, and deployment of wind energy, and is also expanded into solar. The center launched the Virginia Wind for Schools program in 2010 and is considered the Wind Application Center for Virginia. So every state does the Wind for Schools program just a little bit different, and in Virginia, our flavor is a uh, kind of unique. So we have a couple of main components of our program. First, uh, we have university courses that address wind energy and solar energy. Secondly, uh, we bring technology to the schools and we do this in a couple of different ways. First, we have what we call host schools and host schools host a wind turbine or solar panels at their school. Partner schools are schools that may not have the resources or the wind resource to host a turbine at their school, so they borrow a meteorological tower from the Center for Wind Energy through our, uh, through our state-based anemometer loan program. It is a year loan, and they can gather real-time wind data in their classroom um, through this program. And after a year, JMU students will take the tower down, and this is a completely free program. Thirdly, we have the affiliate program. Uh, and affiliate schools are schools that have installed technology at their campus but did not go through the Win for Schools program. Either it was before Win for Schools started in Virginia or they just happened to go through it on their own. But we continue to keep them in the network and work with them on integrating their technology into the curriculum. And lastly, the Center for Wind Energy recently started a solar loan program with some solar panels that were um, in storage at the university that nobody was using, and we begin to loan them out to local schools um, to use for educational projects. The third component of the Virginia Wind for Schools program is teacher professional development. So again, once the school has technology <clears throat> installed on their campus, it's important that the teachers understand how to integrate the technology into the current curriculum so that teachers um, and students are benefiting from their presence. Fourthly, the JMU uh, campus hosts a solar and wind facility, and we invite schools and uh, local groups to come and tour those facilities and learn more about solar and wind at JMU. We can come out to your classroom and bring wind and solar activities to you, and we can also loan kits uh, from our lending library. Our lending library is full of over 30 kits that uh, pertain to electricity, energy, wind energy, solar energy, and water energy. And they are available for teachers to borrow for free um, for up to a month and use in their classrooms. And we at the center um, promote those kits at various teacher professional conferences to also make sure the students or the teachers uh, are familiar with the kits and how to use them before they borrow. Lastly, the Center for Wind Energy also hosts the Kidwin Challenges for the state of Virginia. And the Kidwin Challenge is a engineering design competition for middle school and high school teams where the, the students actually build their own turbine. In Virginia, we've had 21 successful wind projects, and these would be successful installations of wind technology at schools. And you can see from the dots that they are very um, geographically dispersed and we do that on purpose. We want to make sure that we get technology out to as many schools as we possibly can um, throughout the entire state. We do have seven affiliate schools and our affiliate schools are again those schools that had wind energy technology installed without the help of the Wind for Schools program. So either before the program started or just did not need our help to uh, to do this. As you can see, there's a lot of technical centers, um, but there's also um, some museums as well. We have eight host schools, and again, host schools are those schools that host a wind turbine at their school that we have helped them through the process. Uh, again, trying to remain geographically diverse. 
And we have six partner schools. And again, the partner schools are those who hosted meteorological towers at their campus to measure the wind resource. So overall, um, since 2010, we've had quite an educational impact. We have trained over a thousand teachers. Um, we have impacted over 6,500 students through campus visits and tours and school visits. Uh, we have multiple lending library locations throughout the, the state um, with over 45 wind, solar, and energy efficiency kits. Um, we have hosted many Kid Win Challenges, uh, 142 teams and 1,700 people have attended those Kid Win Challenges over the years. Um, we have over 60 student research projects at all different levels that we have advised. And as of now, we have dozens of JMU alumni working in the wind industry. So um, in 2015, we took a new direction with the Wind for Schools program and focused primarily on student-driven research for the pre-development stages of the wind, pro the wind uh, turbine development process. Um, so much of our education with the Wind for Schools program throughout the country seems to happen after the turbine has been installed at the school. But we understand that there is a lot of education um, educational opportunities during the pre-development stages when we're trying to figure out what kind of turbine, where should it go, how much energy is it going to produce, how much is it going to cost, um, what kind of permits do we need, there's lots that can be learned. And so we want to really focus on that pre-development stage and get those students involved. We also want to broaden the focus of Wind for Schools from just wind to wind, solar, and energy conservation and awareness. So the students will first understand how much energy they use, how they use it, how they can save more energy, and then once they have saved as much as they can, how can they use wind and or solar to, um, to generate that remaining energy. So we have developed something called the Pre-Host School Research Project. And this is uh, what we call the school electricity assessment. Again, the students first perform an electricity survey on a space in their school that they feel that they would like to um, become net zero in. Once they understand how they're using that electricity and how much they're using, they develop and execute an energy conservation plan. Once they've gotten their energy usage down as far as they can go, they then research alternative energies, including wind and solar, and they do a siting assessment, a resource assessment, power production estimates, and develop a budget for what they could actually use at the school to take care of the energy usage. And then the students would come to JMU, all the teams that are doing this uh, research project, and present their findings. And um, industry folks would be there to give them uh, good feedback and hopefully get their projects started. So to become a host school, um, you, we encourage you to go through the pre-host school development um, research project first, but if you're interested in hosting a turbine at your school, you can contact us. And what this means is that the Center for Wind Energy will provide some assistance or hand-holding, as we say. So we can help you present your case to the school board, um, which would be kind of the product of the school energy assessment. Um, we help you with understanding and uh, getting your permitting, finding the funding for the turbine. Again, we do not provide a turbine, but we will help you apply for grants um, or look for um, sponsors or donations from the industry. Um, we'll help manage the project and the installation logistics. We'll help you choose an installer or devise a plan to help community members donate services. And we will definitely help train the teachers and educate your students. And then the school is responsible for getting the school board approval, getting the city and county approvals and permits, identifying funding sources and writing the proposals, educating their students, training their teachers, and using that turbine and its data to teach about energy in the classroom. And that's the last thing that is the biggest challenge that the center has is keeping in touch with all those schools that have wind turbines and making sure that that turbine is being used in their classroom. So if you have any um, questions or would like to become a host or a partner school or even an affiliate school, please contact me 
uh, for more information. Mm -hmm.